Hi. Good evening, everyone. There is a long delay tonight, so uh, if it seems like I'm a little slow to reply to some things, it's a couple minutes long for whatever reason. Uh, for example, I hit go uh, and then brought the camera back up right away. So there is that. Uh, but I am very excited uh, to dye some yarn today. And I hear a child. Please shut the door, sweetie. It's serious, Mr. Honey, then you have to go talk to your dad. Yes, but mommy is live streaming right now, so please be quiet in the hallway, okay? <laughs> oh, and it started right away. Um, <laughs> hello. Oh, Susan Cram. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, if any of you are curious about how to get your comment to show up in a really bright colored box, uh, there's a dollar sign at the bottom of the chat. But hello, everyone. Uh, so I am having uh, a little bit of technical difficulties at the moment uh, in that I think that the main camera is working fine. Yes, that is working fine. But you might notice the, like, this camera is like flickering. So I don't know what that is about, but we will proceed. Uh, it's as distracting as I move my hands. Uh, you want to do this one so badly it's still striping? I thought about that. The pro I, I thought about actually doing a self striping one, and I might do a self striping standalone video inspired by this, but I decided against it because I think that uh, when I do self striping colorways, I try to include a swatch and at the end, and uh, that just adds. Uh, more time and I feel like it would self-striping colorways deserve their own dedicated video. But yes, thank you all so much for joining me. All right. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and tonight is the May 2021 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream. Today, hey Lucas, please shut the door. Okay. I'm live already, sweetie. <laughs> Tonight is the May 2021 Chemnitz Dialogue live stream, and we are going to dye some yarn inspired by this magnificent Blue Jay over here. Uh, I actually decided to go and look for Blue Jay photos because I found a Blue Jay feather in my backyard, and I always marvel at just the really beautiful colors and graphic patterning on there, and it made me want to use it to dye some yarn. You're going to do self-striping? Yay! You totally bought, just bought a light blue skein to over-dye today. Oh, that sounds awesome. Uh, sorry, everyone, I'm getting distracted. Uh, but I will be dying here on tonight, inspired by this, but this is a dye-along. So I am encouraging all of you at home to dye yarn, fabric, roving, whatever you would like to dye, uh, inspired by this photo. And then share your pictures with me on Instagram, using the hashtag, which is over there, uh, the Chemnitz Dialogue hashtag, or by uh, commenting on the Blue Jay photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page, and then I will pull a bunch of the photos to include in a recap of tonight's stream that'll come out sometime mid-June. I usually, usually if I'm doing a yarn dyeing live stream, I like to have the recap up like within a week, but with the dialogues, I leave more time so that way it gives you time to dye fiber or fabric at home so that I have more time to include those into the recap. So many shades of blue on those feathers, yes. And the reason why this is also extra fun is that two, no two people will look at the photo and choose to do exactly the same thing. Uh, many in the, a few in the chat, and I was thinking about self-striping, but I bet if we each did it, there would be little nuanced differences, whether it's the colors or the technique and things like that. 
Um, but, you know, two people can come up with something really, really similar, and that is also okay. One example is tonight I am going to be ignoring the green in the backdrop. I want to focus on the beautiful coloration in the bird itself, uh, these beautiful blues and some black and maybe some soft grays and tans. I have a lot of colors pulled to play with. But you are obviously welcome to focus on the bird with, you know, this uh, blurred out tree or greenery behind it. That is absolutely something you can bring in. Or you can focus just on the tail feathers or just on the head of the bird. Uh, there's no reason why you have to go through the whole thing. The point is just to see how one picture can inspire a lot of different people to go in similar and different ways. You want to try but have no idea where or what to buy. Um, in terms of t like materials for dyeing yarn, uh, well I do have um, in my video description I have links and affiliate links to a lot of the tools and materials that I personally choose to use the most. Uh, for example, I think I have most of the yarn bases I will be dyeing tonight linked down below. I don't think I linked specifically to Knit Fix Troll though. So I am a, an affiliate marketer with Knit Picks, Dyer Supplier, and Amazon. Uh, so all of, I have all of my affiliate links clearly marked, but what that means is that I do earn commission when people make purchases on those sites after clicking on my link. Um, Ooh, spinach dyeing. I haven't tried that. Um, yeah, uh, but um, another nice way to get started is food coloring. And I, as in terms of dialogues, uh, my blueberry, I don't remember what month it was, but there's a Chemnitz Dialog playlist that I should have linked below. If not, you can find it on the main Chemnitz tutorials page and the blueberry one I did with food coloring. I think. <laughs> but anyway, I do have a link to the inspiration photo on Facebook down in the video description. If someone wants to go there directly to um, uh, submit your pictures. And before I guess I jump into what I'm thinking about uh, for tonight, I, uh, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. <laughs> Thank you, and I think we're gonna have so much fun. So I pulled, and I don't have dry ones here with me, I pulled a number of different yarn bases for tonight. Uh, one of them is the Wolf and Die Fours Zebra Fingering, uh, which is a base that I featured last month, and it has, it's a two-ply Peruvian Highland wool, and it has some like some of the twist is like black and so i thought that that was a really fun base to play with for today i also grabbed a i should i wish i had brought the dry ones down maybe i will pull them out and show them damp because this feels silly me describing them
Okay, so my normal audio disappeared. I guess I'll try to do it with this, even though this isn't as good. Um, I think that this one should be working now. Um, this is just the integrated computer microphone. Uh, and I can't tell if I can hear okay, myself. Okay, so my normal audio. So, yeah, I could not see. Um, yeah, unfortunately, even if a, um, I saw someone should like patrons reach out, even if a patron messaged me, I don't think I still wouldn't hear because I don't have my like, I don't know if I would hear an email notification. Because <laughs> I'd probably ignore it if I got one. Um, shoot. Yeah, so normally I have had some struggles with that camera and I need to replace the webcam. Oh, it's working. Crap. Hello? Okay, that's working. Why wasn't it working over here? Okay, that's working there. Okay, I fixed it. I fixed it. Um, so the, I was having issues with the audio earlier, uh, and I guess I reset the whole settings, but a lot, but it didn't reset under the like single camera setup that I had. So that's what happened. Um, so what was the last thing you heard me say? I guess you heard nothing when I was at the counter. Uh, <laughs> I am so sorry about that. This is why I like, I, hmm, maybe, maybe I need like, like, mods or something so that way someone can like i don't know how because like i can't really see the chat much when i'm standing at the counter um i need like a screen so i can have the chat really big uh maybe i should like put it on my ipad or something so that way i can read the chat easier nothing from the counter okay but it should be working now. <laughs> so I'll do it all over again. <laughs> Thank you all for your patience. Yeah, that is because I hadn't fixed the uh, camp or the, the microphone over here. I think I assumed that it would be uh, the same. <laughs> yep, yep, because I have it as a separate uh, thing. Okay, so the two bases I was talking about are both non-superwash. So one of these bases is the one that I featured last month. And this is Wool to Die For's Zebra Fingering. This yarn base is two ply. One of the plies is just a bare white. The other is a variegated, mostly black and white, but with some gray where the black and white blend a bit. And so this felt like an obvious choice because of the striping. Sometimes, well, often in these streams, I like to pick a yarn that fits with the feeling of the inspiration. This base here is, uh, there we go, Dyer Supplier's Marled Sock. This is a four ply yarn, but it has two plies that are a light gray, two that are more charcoal gray, and it is 40% merino, 40% Peruvian highland wool, and 20% uh, nylon. I do have both of these linked in the description. Dyer Supplier is an affiliate link. Wool to Dye For isn't. Um, the other base that I have, I have a bag. It's the Bouncy Erin from Dyer Supplier. 
And that one's just 100% superwash merino. And then finally, I have some stroll around from Knit Picks, which I don't think I specifically linked. I think I looked through the other ones, but stroll is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. The other two will be crowded. Wait. Um, what will be crowded? I'm not dyeing them in here. I'm just placing it in there um, to wait for me. But we will get started doing a little bit of some swatching. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad that when the audio went that I sat down <laughs> because part of me was just going to go straight through. Um, so, but first, so this is the stroll. It's 7525. I need to add some water and vinegar to it. So let's add a splash of vinegar. And then some water. Uh, a lot of times I do measure the amount of acid that I'm adding, but a lot of other times it really doesn't matter. Like there's some things where the amount of acid you have matters a lot. Uh, and sometimes that can help with like a troubleshooting, but there are many, many times when the amount of acid you have isn't that big a deal. So. Uh, but this will be ready to go, I guess, just whenever. But I think I will go ahead and remove yarn from the pre-soak and just set it in here while I think. Hmm. Actually, no, I'll just leave the rest of the yarn in the bucket. I am debating a lot, but I think what I want to start with is... I want to do some crude swatching uh, with some colors, some acid dye colors I have, and then we'll dissolve them in liquid and sort of go from there. But I'm going to come over here and pull up. I have one other photo. Okay. So this I actually have left in here from last time. Oh, it will be too crowded in the colors if you use only the bouncy. Um, well, I, I'm not necessarily using all of those colors that I pulled mixed to the Blue Jay. I sort of looked at the picture and used a color picker to pull some just for inspiration. Uh, but the color I have a plan for the bouncy that is a little different from what I normally do. Um, <laughs> all right, so here down below, I have, the, I don't know why I still have this saved from a stream or something recently, but I was looking at it because it was reminding me that whatever blue I pick, they're all going to be a little bit, excuse me, too bright. So with the exception of probably on the Marl soft yarn that is grayish already, that's going to tone down some of those blues. But for some of the other blues, I might need to add some black to them to make it less bright. Um, oh, nice. Uh, so that is sort of one of my thoughts. Now I do have a tiny bit of true turquoise already in solution. That color is a bit of a pain though. So ideally I would maybe use something else. I also have a little bit of a 2% stock of true black. And so a percent stock solution refers to the number of grams of dye you have dissolved in uh, 100 milliliters of liquid. So a 1% stock would be one gram of dye per 100 milliliters, 2% is two, 
And it's just an easy way so then you can calculate a volume and know how many grams of dye are in there. Uh, it is a separate, like the concentration of your dye stock really doesn't have a lot to do with the depth of shade that you end up on yarn. Depth of shade is the number of grams of dye used per 100 grams of fiber. And what's important for the depth of shade is the total amount of dye you add. The concentration that you mix it at is not what's important there. So I just wanted to throw that out. Um, Judy says, you're thinking of adding black, silver, gray, and maybe gunmetal. Ooh, gunmetal would be a really good one. Gunmetal would be good, yeah. Uh, so let's go look at the colors that I pulled, which don't have a ton to do with the swatch, but uh, that swatch was just making me think about how I would want to deepen, make the colors feel less bright, even while having them intense. And so one way you can do that, and color theory is not my strength, so terms are not like that, are not my strength. One way you can do that is by adding black, but to have something that is less bright, we could also go and add a little bit of some orange, for example, to these blues to sort of bring down that brightness a little bit. Well, I guess I did pull Caribbean and Sapphire. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to focus on some of the browns. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of dyeing by feel, but I do want to see how things work together. Of these colors, sea spray is a little too green. Frozen's a little too bright. Um, but I think that these colors, which you might not be able to read. So I've got, I'm going to take a picture of this for the recap. <laughs> okay, so right here I have frozen blue, Caribbean blue, sapphire blue, alpine blue, baby blue eyes. They changed up the naming there. True black, pecan brown, teddy bear brown, sand dune, twilight gray, and platinum. Obviously, I will not be using all of these colors, but I do enjoy at times starting out with some kind of crude swatch um, just to get a feel for how the different colors work together. Now, when I am dealing with the dry dye powders, I will be wearing a respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves. I have all those linked down below as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this inside my catering steam pan. And I'm really just using this to contain any spill. Uh, I might end up wishing that there's more liquid in here. I squeezed out too much. So I'm gonna dunk it back in. Okay. Instead of having squeezed out yarn, I am back with saturated dripping yarn. Um, and this is because Instead of going low immersion, I figure we'll add the colors and then steam set. Um, how do I want to arrange this in here? Since it's wet, it's going to like clump itself a little bit. There. We'll arrange it like that. Which... I guess you can see a tiny bit better that way. Uh, actually, I can move all of these colors over here. Maybe we'll throw sea spray in the mix. I think that's going to be too green. But, and I have a notebook to write this down. Okay. 
then the other reason why I like doing these little swatch things is I genuinely enjoy playing with colors this way. So there is that. But I do think that in general, I want to deal with liquid dyes today versus dye powders. I have to think how I'm going to deal with this. Hmm, okay. I need my spoon. The realization that I'm like, oh, okay. So with both the zebra and the mauled sock yarn, those I'm going to do things that are probably a little bit more subtle because the base already has a lot of contrast in it itself. Um, but let's. Alright, well, let's go ahead and start with sea spray because I'm pretty sure that this color, <laughs> that's a lot of dye. I'm pretty sure this color, ooh, actually, maybe I'm wrong. Definitely has green to it, but let me pull up. Oh, shoot. I'm going to, do I have it here? No. Let's add image existing. There we go. Nope. Come on, image. Nope. I don't want to select all of you. Okay. Let's see. of using acid dyes at first as well but then uh, I got used to it so the downside of me doing swatches in this way versus the way I usually do it with more low immersion is that uh, the colors are going to be more intense on the fiber, so I'm not sure why I'm doing it this way. I'm not a huge fan, but actually, I can sort of tap it in. So Frozen is one of my favorite blues. It is very intense, um, but actually not that pigmented. So let me write this down. Sea spray. But actually, Caribbean blue should be, I'm just going to take a tiny bit, significantly more intense. I believe Caribbean blue is a primary, and I barely ever use it. Uh, okay, Caribbean blue and Frozen look extraordinarily similar. But I would say the Caribbean blue is probably more pigmented. Okay. Next up is baby blue eyes. Ooh. Okay, so baby blue eyes, as far as premixed colors go, baby blue eyes is pretty good. Um, I would say for like any pastel blue areas, but baby blue eyes is really, really good for those pastel areas. Oh, Don, Don, thank you so much for the super chat. Okay. 
Okay, Alpine Blue. Ooh, this one has some like white flecks in it. Ooh, I like this one. I don't think this is a color I've used outside of like one of my random swatches. Oh, I like Alpine Blue, I think. I'll have to look at the picture bigger. So Alpine Blue does not just seem to be like, at, like mega pigmented, but ooh, the uh, muted tone of its pastel is nice. So this is Sapphire. Whoop, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, but that's not bad either. So Sapphire and Alpine Blue look really similar. Now, where these two colors would differ would be uh, at a 1% depth of shade because the sapphire or the alpine blue is mixed, less pigmented. But just like the frozen and Caribbean blue are really similar, mm, the alpine blue, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But, but those three are pretty similar. Okay, the grays. Wait, did I grab? Oh, I guess twilight gray is pretty blue. It's a very like bluish gray color. Wait, or not? Maybe it's purple. I thought it was a bluish gray. See, this is why I swatch. My twilight blue showed up being very purple. Oh gosh. Sometimes colors look different based on the technique. This color might shift with heat. Uh, I don't remember it feeling that purple. So, did I, not, I didn't even bring silver gray over. Mainly, I think, because silver gray and black can be so similar. Here's platinum. Um, and I know that for gray, I could use like just a hair of black if needed. But actually the platinum is really nice. I like that platinum a lot. That's not also not a color I use a lot, but I really like it. Uh, true black is here. <laughs> eh, no, I'll do the powder because I'm doing the powder with everything else. But true black is black. Oh dear. Okay, so what I've got uh, platinum, true black. I almost don't even want the browns, but haha. <laughs> okay, that's only funny because my name is Brown. Uh, so I need more utensils. Okay, I'm going to use my fingers now. Okay, we've got some teddy bear brown. But I want to, I'm looking at with these how it goes a little more pastel. And I use, I feel like I use way too much of that. Okay, I really like the Teddy Bear Brown Teddy Pastel. Uh, don't worry, we'll wipe everything up and these will all get sort of like mushed together. I'm gonna add water on top and just let it all go wild. So that's Teddy Bear. Here's the Pond Brown, which is bluer 
some teddy bear. It's a bluer, or by bluer, like a cooler brown. And then finally, at long last, Sand Dune, whom I love. And I'm adding a lot on because it just is very subtle. I feel like if I'm going to go for brown, I'm going to go for Sand Dune to not overwhelm it. But I'm not sure how well you all can see the colors, but I'm curious to hear what you think of them. And I need to grab a picture. I need to write down the rest of the names. My hands are very sweaty in this glove. I do reuse gloves. Okay, true black. Then I did Teddy. Then uh, Pecan. Sand. Okay, and my camera. So I like that. Um, ooh, the Caribbean blue has given us some really beautiful specs. Why do I feel like this does not like the my lights? There we go. So there's a few different things that I want to do. Let's see. I'm really drawn to this alpine blue, but I think I do want to pull up the picture. I'm drawn to the alpine blue. I sort of like that and the baby blue eyes. Um, even though that's pretty similar. Uh, but the alpine blue is a little bit muted already, so I like those two. I like platinum. The black is kind of obvious. I already have that mixed. Um, I like the sand dune, but I want to see the picture. So that's sort of my initial huh, thought. Let's see what you guys think. And hopefully, oh gosh, I hope I don't lose sound again. Oh no, I didn't. I can see the sound going. Um, the more oops on a project, the better it turns out. Ah, uh, yes. Well, my children are on a different floor, supposedly in bed, but they're being really loud. And so that's bugging me. Okay, Mr. Bird. Make you, actually, let's make, make you bigger and cover me. Yeah, I think I like, oh, I just can't see my point. I think I like that alpine blue. I still might want to add a little bit of black to it uh, to get the more pastel. So maybe I'll just focus on the alpine. I feel like that there's like a dusty gray blue that I have in my collection that I didn't pull. I think I thought that that was the twilight. The twilight was looking so purple right now that I am feeling confused because <laughs> I'm not remembering. Uh, but yeah. Oh, I have a million containers of dye. The three on my right. So the three well, on my right or on the, the picture. Yes. A lot of them, those three, the nuance is very, very subtle. I would say, cause even here, the one in the middle, that Alpine blue is a little bit less bright. 
Well, it depends on the yarn. So, so it on, um, and so you're right. Um, it definitely depends on the yarn. I think I want, um, so the black should help some of it turn a little bit grayer. Absolutely. Um, there's that, but it's just, I feel like with the back of the bird, I feel like I have a color like that that I'm just completely forgetting about. So yeah, so now I'm going to go back and this is what I am going to do. Sometimes I come in with a plan. Other times I make it up as I go. <laughs> and this is one of the like, let's make it up as we go. Now brown is actually pretty good for turning some colors, but oh wait. Yeah, I sort of liked, I think what I'm gonna do is Alpine blue and I might mix up a little bit of frozen just because I know a little bit about how that behaves. Although actually there's almost some, I like the sea spray, that green in there. So I think that those five colors are what I'm going to stick with. But now we're watching things move and spread. And I am intentionally sort of muddying what we have here because that also is handy because we're seeing some of those grays that I was talking about wanting sort of come out. But you can also see how much color, just with that splash of whatever vinegar is, how much of it started striking pretty darn quickly. So this is a fairly random, probably unbalanced kind of colorway. I feel like I'm gonna put the respirator on and add a tiny bit more color. Not a lot, just because I feel like there's like part of the yarn that didn't get very much. So let me get set up to do that. But even with the purple, this is colorway one. Just playing with all these colors and then we're going to tone it. We're, we'll tone things down uh, for the rest. Okay, let's do, hmm, because I'm enjoying this color, the Alpine Blue. Let's do a little bit more of you over here. Wow, that really did not make a bunch of impact. Let's put on a lot more. So some colors, and of course now both my hands are wet, some colors make an impact when they're heated. So there's a chance some colors will be a bit different. Uh, but yeah, I like that Alpine Blue. I like that it's not too intense. Do frozen. Frozen, I kind of know what to expect. I'm really just doing this because there were some colors that didn't make a huge impact where they were. I'm just going to add a little bit of teddy bear brown. And I'm doing this in a very messy way that I actually don't recommend. <laughs> Using my fingers to finger paint. Okay. So now, as I drop my paper towel in, I'm going to let this sit for a moment. 
before I move it around. And I'm going to put some of these dye colors away. The ones that I don't think I'm going to use. Why is your door open? Why is your door open? Maybe it wasn't even open. The twilight gray, I really forgot that that was purple. black back out so I have it when I need it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to use all these, but I will probably make stocks of like increase stocks of three of the blues. But let's turn on that and move this around. So this time there was more liquid in here when I added the rest of these colors. So there's, we're seeing a little bit of some spread. But actually maybe I do want to go back and get, uh, can't decide which brown. This is beautiful. I really, really like this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and steam set it for 30 minutes. But you can see, like, some colors just strike really fast. Really, really fast. And what's in here, I mean, there's a, t like, it's not nothing. It's not nothing. Where am I going to put you? I'm going to do this at the sink. My like collection of leftovers. And this has acid in it. So I think what I'm going to do, I've been going back and forth about, ooh, I do kind of want to measure. Uh, no, I don't want to measure. I can always just mix more. I want to, I feel like dying by feel. Um, but I think what I'm going to do is start with the blues because I think what I want to do is on the marled sock, I just want to do a tonal. I just want to over dye that blue on the, on the zebra. I don't know what I want to do yet actually. I've been going back and forth. I've been going back and forth on a lot of things and it's already like 30. And so I'm like, what am I going to do? Used a correct periwinkle gray. Ooh. Yeah, I like, I have a bias towards the Dharma jars, and so that's why I don't pull my jacquards enough. Um, so, yes, um, I'm not planning on adding black on the zebra or marl. Those ones I'm going to focus mostly on the blue, I think. Um, yeah. Okay. So I, I'm just going back and forth about whether or not I want to just go for it and eyeball it or measure. I think what I'm going to do is measure out the amount of dye 
but then use a non-specific volume for that. I think that's the direction I'm going to go because that will help me. So what am I looking for? I've got, oh, I need more spoons. I always need more spoons. Ha ha ha. bit of a spoon theory joke for my other spoonies, but I literally needed spoons. <laughs> okay, so let's measure out. Not that I'm going to remember any of this because I'm not writing this down, but I'm going to put my mask back on. Okay, and so in this one, I'm going to measure out just one gram of the alpine blue, and that is more than one gram. Okay, we've got one gram of alpine blue. Not tearing. Oh well, it's approximate. As I okay, one gram intermediate is three grams. I know I said I was being approximate, but I can't help it. Okay, three grams of alpine blue for two different things. Then we're gonna do. Uh, I think three grams. Oh, oh. The second, that was exactly, okay, that's 3.1 grams, but on the order of three grams of frozen, and then we're going to do that much. Oh, 1.00 grams. Okay, that feels lucky. <laughs> okay, so I am going to write this down. I did one gram. Frozen. I don't know if I'm going to want the sea spray, but I might want it. Okay, we'll start with these. I'm trying to get some hot water. Where is my... Oh, that's where that is. Okay. Um... So the thing with measuring out non-specific quantities is that the volume doesn't really matter as much. These are our two alpine blues. I will turn off that water in a second. See where do we wet this? Ooh, that is not that soluble.
had little particulates in there. This is our three gram one. I'm gonna put it in a secondary container. Frozen, it's one of my favorites. And hopefully I didn't mix up the one gram versus three gram of Alpine Blue. But we're going to let those colors sit there for a moment. And I'm going to take this off. Alright, and we are going to... I did not set a timer for my steamer basket, so that's just sort of going. But I want to do a 1% depth of shade of the Alpine Blue on our Marl sock yarn. So that is what this one gram is for. and it is not well dissolved at all. But this is the thing and the reason why sometimes I use the same colors over and over and other times I like to mix things up and do something different. So on the non-superwash yarn, things are going to strike and absorb a lot slower than they would on a superwash uh, counterpart. I want to add more liquid in here. Here is some of that warm water. Gonna fill it to there. There's no acid in here yet. Uh, none at all. Let's see. You have a brushed steel and blue gray that are Dharma. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. Let's let's add the marled yarn to this. I only pre-soaked 100 grams, and actually dipping it in, it doesn't look like a lot. So with the dips in, because it's not striking quickly, I'm not like, oh my gosh, that is so blue. It's sort of going to not have some of that brightness on it, but we can always add another layer of color to this. So there is, ooh, that's a really pretty grayish blue. Uh, there's no acid in there yet. I do need to get some acid. Uh, some of these gloves, it's fair and time. Okay, I need vinegar. Still didn't set a timer for the skinner basket, but that is okay. I can't say that I'm expecting this and I'm just adding some acid. I can't say that I'm expecting this to behave like a perfect cool vat. Uh, I don't know if all of the color will absorb without heat. Likely what will happen is I will add all this to my steamer basket uh, at the end of the stream to the warm water at the bottom and let it soak in there and have some more heat. But what this does is allow me to keep my pot free um, for a colorway that is going to be slightly more involved. 
uh, and then, um, yeah, and so then I'm going to go set this aside. Still don't know what I want to do with the zebra, but I have 500 grams of the something. Okay, I have 500 grams of our non, of our superwash yarn, that Aaron, the worsted Aaron weight yarn. And I need to move these dies. Because I do not want this to get wet. I want these accessible. But I'm going to set this elsewhere. So that way if I splash, I don't worry about getting them wet. And while I pause for one second, if you're enjoying the stream, please, please, please um, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you very, very much. Um, <laughs> yeah, the blue is really, really pretty. Okay, so this is my 12 quart pot. And we're gonna do the following. The leftovers from all of our things is this really pretty blue. There's a tiny bit of acid from the original pre soak that I've added in with that. I just realized I can't see it. I can't see the uh, thermometer. Okay. Um, and this is our Alpine Blue. I want to add, that could be a, around a gram-ish. This is what we're doing. We're dying by feel. And what I want to do, add a little splash of black. I'm about to like stick my hand in there. Let's see. Oh, I can barely register that when I'm wiping off, but we'll see on the yarn in a moment. So I'm going to do something in a way that I haven't really done things before, but I think that that's enough water a little over two liters of water and I'm going to come in with our yarn I have removed most of the liquid okay and I'm coming in with 500 grams of yarn and I'm just dipping it. And so then we can see the color. And this color is fairly perfect. Um, it isn't a bright blue, but it is sort of actually what I want. Um, and I am going to leave that like that for a minute. And we'll also see how quickly this color soaks up. <laughs> if I need to go over to the stove or not, that is deepening. And functionally, I mean, functionally, I am actually dip dyeing at this stage. But what's a little bit different about this is my plan. So I'm hoping to soak up as much of this as I can. And then I'm basically going to pour another blue on top of it and sort of see what happens. We know frozen 
strikes pretty quickly. Okay, a lot of that color has struck. So now I want to arrange this where I can sort of see these all five tips. And you guys can't see very well. Ugh. Okay, so I basically dip dyed. There is still, there's not a lot of water volume. Um, what we're gonna do now So I've got a liter of water and no acid. And we see this. Okay, so up in this corner. And I'm gonna come in with some frozen. And just to sort of check the hue, let's see, that's a little bit bright. So what I'm gonna do now is add a little bit of black if I can. About seven drops of my 2% black, which hopefully, oh, I kind of wish that I had some brown pretty bright. So I'm going to bring this in over here and dilute it. So now I've got frozen with a bit of black. And I'm pouring it over top the yarn. And I don't have a name for this technique or anything. I just was like, ooh, let's sort of like dip dye and then space dye. And then we'll add some black on top of this. So at one point I thought I might leave some white behind. So on this colorway, we're probably gonna be missing the bright white. Um, but I wanted to create like a blue base and then, uh, add black to it. And so some of this I do want to sort of like have a little bit like up out of the water to be like even more like a little bit pastel. But I'm now going to take this over to the stove. Ooh. Yeah, I'm going to take it to the stove. I'm going to just keep moving everything around. But so that is the, that's step one of this. I might have to add the black. Well, it's only 840. We'll see how quickly this, this absorbs. So there's heat on there. I still have these colors and this color. And I will sit down and read chat and then we will go ahead and mix up uh, some brown and some gray to play on the zebra. And we'll sort of do some hand painting um, and then heat that on the stove. So that is my plan. So we will eventually, oh, nope, I don't want you up there yet. Okay, now I am actually gonna set a timer. Okay, set a timer for 14 minutes. <laughs> oh, good, Carol. Yeah, go ahead and back up to the beginning. That's the thing. These are um, sort of DVR, and you can watch on 2x because then eventually you will intersect. Um, oh, I was going to make this the, the bird smaller, but actually, 
I'm very excited. So what I've been going for here is maybe not quite the tail feather. And again, I'm missing the bright white, but I have sort of like a little bit of some kind of blue gradient, but I wanted the hue to shift a little bit in there. So we'll see how that yarn comes out and how similar they look together. But then I think I would uh, like to, I'm not sure if I want to speckle onto it. I might do heavy speckles on it instead of like actually painting stripes, uh, but we'll see. I'm gonna try to preserve some of the white in the zebra when we paint onto it, but I sort of want to get that like brownish. I want to make that steely bluish. I'm steel shift on that. Um, the elephants, yeah, my elephants are absolutely um, jumping around, but that is fairly normal as long as their door is shut. Um, I am really feeling like I need glasses. I think I say that every time. I wonder if there's a way that I can like make the chat text bigger. Um, it'll be gorgeous. You do some messing when you make it. Sea spray. Yeah. So I I didn't add any sea spray to that one. I think I'll use some sea spray to go for. I'll go more for the tail uh, on our zebra and bring in some more of that sea spray uh, that we see down there. Um, and so I think that that is my plan. The marled yarn is really, really fun. I think that one was in stock. Yes, the marled sock yarn is the, the retail price is $44.57 for a pack of five. Uh, and I did link that down below. Uh, so that way you can grab them if you want. If you're going to make some. Yeah, so I considered. I, I come into these streams with a little bit, with a little bit of a sense of what I would like to do. And then and to an extent, I see how the colors go and then decide. So I had considered with uh, these blues on the pot that I just put on the stove, I considered leaving just like an end out to be white and sort of then keeping that out and reserved. But seeing how, like when I dip it in, how fast and the depth of color and seeing like that, I decided to go ahead and put it all in. We will have um, in that palest section some like really, really baby blue pastels even if it's not white uh, so uh, not everything is always perfect and that is also like I mean looking at this like I want to do a soft blank with these like blues and the black and leave like a white tip or something like I really want to play with that as well or do a um, self striping hello welcome yeah I have a feeling that we're mostly in a, well, actually, it could be really early over, I, I was like, I have a feeling we've got mostly like the North American audience right now, because um, Europe is probably asleep, but Australia could be waking up. <laughs> it's like when I do daytime streams versus evening ones. Um, but... Yes, I think I am going to go ahead and do a brief mini break and go take a drink of water. Uh, but I will be back in just a few minutes. And when I do this, I'm going to go ahead and put an ad break in. You may not see an ad. If you don't, don't worry. Um, oh, yay, Sandy, you're from Denmark. <laughs> oh, it's very late for you. Uh, <laughs> my brother and sister-in-law live in, um, uh, the UK, so, uh, they, like, we think a lot about, like, oh, can we call them at this time? How late is it? It's only 2.30 at night. Oh, goodness. Okay. I'm going to go to a brief, brief break. I'll insert an ad, and I will be right back.
you all so much for your patience uh, and the delay. Utah, New Mexico, Canada. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's almost 11 a.m. in Australia. Huh, my guess was right. No, when I, I think when, so when I spent my semester in Australia, I'm just looking through pictures today, which was, because uh, I'm backing up uh, pictures on, oh, Google Photos, uh, you're sort of grandfathered in with how many pictures you have on there before uh, June 1st, so I'm backing up a lot of pictures, then I saw a lot of my Australia ones. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that I think there was like a daylight savings time in there, but it was like 17 hours different at one point. Uh, Michigan. I went to high school in Michigan. But I am, I have lived in Massachusetts more than I've lived anywhere else in my life. Uh, but yeah. Okay, so for, I want to mix up a few more colors, and then we're going to play and see where we go with the zebra. Excuse me. And we're going to add them on and layer. Uh, for that, I'm, yeah, maybe, ooh, maybe I'm going to go, try to go a little bit for something tail feeling with those colors with like a white. The blues will probably spread to the other side. Excuse me. So that's why uh, I'm thinking, but we'll, we'll see. The goal is we're playing with these colors. These are the hues that we've picked. Uh, I do want to mix up some brown though. If you're just tuning in, I am very crudely measuring things tonight. Uh, so I have, I weighed out the dye powder, but then the volumes aren't specific. But that way I have a feel of how much dye I have total. I'm checking in on my kettle that you can't see. Ooh, that's looking cool. Oh, that did exactly what I wanted it to do. I am so excited. There's something almost green in it. I can't wait to be able to show you, but I don't want to melt my shower curtain. All right, I am going to put on my respirator. Let's mix up these colors. I feel like because these are pastels, I might want to go for like about three grams of each, maybe. How much is that? It is about three grams. 3.04. Not very precise, Rebecca. I think it's okay. <laughs> My hand's shaking a little bit. That is not good. I am also wearing my safety glasses. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to dissolve these up and then we can say goodbye to the mask for a bit. I'm going to go ahead and paste these.
So it is 100% cheaper to take a more pigmented pre-mixed color and use a tiny bit of it than it is to use a lot of a more pre-mixed pastel color. Uh, I do believe that Dharma does scale the pricing of their colors probably to reflect uh, different uh, costs, but uh, yeah, so just want to put that out there. So we can, eh, we can, the nice thing about a non superwash yarn is it's pretty forgiving. So we can like check these hues and stuff on the yarn itself instead of a paper towel. It's a green pick of the stove top. Great idea. Great idea. And then I'll also add more vinegar to it. Great idea. Thank you, Flora. A lot of times I do that. I need to, so with the uh, pandemic, I gave one of my webcams to my husband to use. I just uploaded a photo. Uh, I gave one of my webcams to my husband. And so he is, uh, oh, the timer's about to go off anyway. And so he is uh, still using that. Take another picture of me lifting up. I'm going to turn off the heat. Like, I'm going to add one more photo to my stories. I am at Chemnitz on Instagram, and you should totally follow me. Yay, Andrew! I am actually live right now. And, well, I guess you can't, I don't know how much I'm the time stamps. Okay, uh, let's set up with our zebra. And we're going to do this in a pan, uh, like so. Okay, one of the yarn bases I used made this pre-soak a little cloudy. Could be the marls. One of them is just a little dirty. So let's bring in, I've got 300 grams of the zebra and I'm going to try to shift um, but I want to leave some white. So I'm going to be totally nervous about uh, things burning but Maybe I'll have that towards the front. The other thing I get nervous about is colors wicking. Which doesn't happen a ton, but I'm going to create guides for myself with zip ties. And so the goal is to leave a small section of some white and to attempt to not go add color beyond this zip tie. It may happen. The zip ties are not on the same spot for all three, but that is just sort of the goal. Now, I'm currently thinking about the feather and I am going to try to move you so you can see the better. All right, I'm thinking about the feather, uh, the tail feather, which has a little bit more of like a teal. Let's make you bigger for a second. There's a, almost a little bit more yellow in part of that, and then we've got deeper blue and then the white. 
I don't think I'm going to necessarily have it exact with the darkest blue right there, but we will see. It's more about like, I'm not literally going for it. I want to emulate that, uh, that the feeling of that. But I have a feeling we'll be adding some browns in here as well. And we're gonna layer colors on top of each other let them soak through and have some fun. So let's do, this was some frozen with a little bit of black. So I've got like that much. Oh, this is a measuring cup, like 150 milliliters or so. Let's add some sea spray. I think this is my sea spray. Let's see, color-wise. Oh, I think this is perfect. Oh, I think this is perfect. Oh, I think I need more water. Oh, and I actually don't have any acid in here right now. So I am going to try to remember as I add these colors, just add a little bit of vinegar. Yeah, so this is a mixture of frozen black and sea spray. And one of the things that I think I'm gonna be able to accomplish is, and I don't think I necessarily need to dilute it more than this is diluted already, but by mixing it up a little bit separately, that's gonna shift the hues that we have in here, which I think will be really lovely. And so I'm not gonna worry about like a gradient. I could have dip dyed this if I really wanted to. This one is a lot deeper and bolder. But we're also like as it spreads through and since, whoop, since it's non superwash as I like mesylate, here we go. Can I pull that up next? You can see it is going through to the other side because even with some vinegar, it is not going to strike nearly as quickly. Let's do, again, some of this frozen in black. And let's add, you are brown. And, you know, we're gonna be mixing these colors on the yarn. Oh, funny, that's a very similar effect. Um, let's add a little bit of Frozen. I really feel like I'm playing, um, I'm feeling like a mad scientist, which I very much enjoy. Let's see. Ooh, I like that. They're all going to be pretty similar. It's a bunch of blues. Um, but there we go. I did not add vinegar to that one, but we're going to have some dark and some light. I don't want to go too dark um, because I don't want to overwhelm the dark and light ply, but I want to play with some of those feelings. Let's do some of our sand dune. A feeling this is going to be more. Ooh, that's really pretty. That gave us a very steely kind of blue. It's easy to forget. Um, it's definitely easy to forget how the different colors, um, like that the color in the bare yarn does have an impact. Do 
frozen. Let's do whatever you are. I think platinum. And then let's go for some alpine. Well, I don't think we've added yet. I feel like everything is ending up a little bit. Yeah, I think maybe I need to tone down some of the frozen. But actually, these are all feeling quite different. Oh, good. I was a little worried. And see, some of this, there's some lightness but that's okay. That's like part of the bird as well. And I'm okay with it. Um, I'm okay with these colors spreading. I am a little afraid if I'm afraid of anything of things feeling too muted, um, in the areas, which I don't think is an unreasonable fear. Let's get just our alpine blue. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Or like a, whoop. And see, like these colors are gonna do, I don't think I added vinegar that time. They're gonna do what they're gonna do on here. We've got just like a lot of different blues going on. I'm going to add some acid and okay on in person it's a lot more green like there's a lot more green and yellow that I can see um, on your camera it looks way more gray on your camera on my monitor uh, but the other thing I always have to keep in mind, because I'm like, ooh, maybe that's too dark. Things always look way darker when wet. Okay, there's a lot of dye in there. Hmm. I'm going to want to add that in. I am going to regret that you guys are not on countertop. Oh, speaking of the countertop, let me check in on our other yarn. Oh, I forgot I'm supposed to turn you off. The steamer basket. Fine, we can check in on the steamer basket too. Okay. Here is our sort of color swatchy colorway. Very, very hot from our steamer basket. weren't able to get over to Instagram. Let's see, here is the Bouncy Erin colorway, which again, I don't think some of the yellows are coming through tonight. Oh, I know what I could do. Do it maybe a little bit. <laughs> I made the light yellower. I got a new light. Um, maybe not like a huge perception difference, but I think that the webcam sort of auto chooses what it does. Okay. Oh, yeah, all of our bouncy Erin, which is a 100% superwash merino face. This is all warm, and I'm going to let it cool a bit. 
trying to figure out what I'm going to do over on the so, so I'm trying to figure out how I want to proceed here. I want, oh, hmm. So I want to add color on there. Oh, I know what I could do, but I don't want to. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna finagle things. Okay, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna get the alpine a little bit. of alpine blue in some water, the splash of vinegar. So we start to add more vinegar. And then I'm gonna come here and pour this on. So what this is doing is allowing me to add some hints of color which might fall out to this area, but I can always like sort of stick it in and pick up other color as things, oh, I need more. I added a big old splash of vinegar to this. Oh dear. That guy's falling. Should pour on the spout. And pull that spoon back. And it's okay if I get a little bit above my section. It's okay. But like some of these blues may run, they may meld together. There's not a lot of brown. I'm gonna go and put this on the, I'm gonna take a picture and then go put it on the stove. And then uh, I've got more dye, so we'll play with that because I have it mixed and it's in open cups and that's what we're gonna do. So to me, and I'll post this on Instagram as well. No, 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 I don't need that. Uh, to me, this looks fairly pigmented right now. It may not look fairly pigmented tomorrow. I have the heat on medium over there. And, okay, good, I didn't put you guys inside out. And so we've got these leftover colors to play with. So, hmm, I'll have to think about the bases, but that I have easily accessible. But you guys can let me know What else I should pull? Oh, this might be pulling off faster than I thought. Mm, maybe not. I really don't want to melt the shower curtain. So, oof. So we'll see. Okay. Um, it's gonna be so cool. Thank you. Um, the zebra yarn. Okay, so the the yarns I actually did link down below. Uh, the zebra yarn is from Wolf to Die For. The marl sock yarn is from Dyer Supplier. Um, so the zebra yarn is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. Actually, let me um, set up. Zebra fingering. Um, that is the wrong camera. Hello, uh, window. Here we go. 
Okay, so this is the zebra fingering right here. Um, and I can make the window a little bit bigger. It is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. They do also at Wool to Die For. And I'm not an affiliate with Wool to Die For. I am an affiliate with uh, Knit Picks and Dyer's Plier, though. Uh, they have this in a superwash as well, and I believe I just got a sample of the superwash. It's an 8020. Uh, so there is that, and this is the retail price. If you're a wholesale customer, you can get it a bit cheaper. Uh, the marled soft yarn. This is the marled soft yarn that I was using that we're just doing a tonal on. So those are those bases, and it should have them linked below. Oh no. Oh, the audio is working there. Fine. It was just realizing, I was like, oh no, what if the audio didn't work when I went shopping with you guys? Um, yeah, I thought, like, when I was looking at this and I was going to look at my yarn and thinking about what I wanted to do, and then I was like, oh, zebra. <laughs> You're working with the bouncy Aaron tonight. Oh, fun. You're loving the bottom of the skin color. Yeah, so the, the I think it's an 80-20 Superwash Merino nylon uh, for the Superwash of the Zebra, but I think that the bases have been popular enough that like they uh, went and did it in other weights and stuff like that. So. I'm trying, I haven't dyed the Bouncy Aaron before. I'm try, I've, uh, I'm now trying to go through, I'm like, I get so many random faces when I shop sometimes that I want to get some of that. Oh, oh, while I wait. I got some mail. I got mail which um, isn't like sponsored or anything. And the frame rate on my face camera is really small. Um, so let's see. I got, woo. So I have an enamel pin that you cannot read. But it says 100% that stitch, and it looks like knit DNA. Um, this is from, uh, I got this, I got from like a Lola Bean shop update. I actually have some of her yarn that's coming for um, something else that I got. And this one update, it was after my second shot, so I just went and grabbed. Ooh, this little like ring that everything on is on is really cute. So it's a little Lola Bean, um, big tag, and then little there's a like the sh like Adela's shoes, and so these are just some Lola Bean stitch markers. <laughs> that damn Della. There we go, and then uh, the headphones. Music. I just thought that those were adorable, and so I got that as a little present. And I thought, ooh, there's like a scent to the wood. Well, this is really pretty. Like you can almost smell like a hint of char, but something like maybe it's the oil. It almost reminds me of like fall and like cinnamon or something. That's sort of what it's making me think of. It's a thick face set. Ooh, I love thick faces. So anyway, um, I'm bummed that the frame rate is down because of the resolution and everything is off. But I think that that is just what I ordered. Um, yeah, so DK Graham, um, if that's how you say your name, I do follow um, them on Instagram as well. Uh, that's what the stitch markers. That was a collaboration that they did. Um, and so it was just fun. And I like stitch markers. So, uh, okay, it's bubbling. So, do, do, do. 
Nope, that was last month. <laughs> okay, let's see. I've got warm, kind of reduce. See, eventually I could just start like poking that like other end in, but I'm really enjoying those feathers. Okay. Uh, do I want to speckle? Not really, but yes, I do. Um, but there's a few different ways that I could do it. Uh, I've got... Hmm. I've got a... Uh, pan. And let's get... Our yarn is warm, but it's like not like that hot. Okay. How do I want to do this? This base is really pretty. Uh, hmm. The problem is I've got five skeins, which feels absolutely ridiculous. So what I'm doing is I'm just like twisting it a tiny bit, um, which is something that is not a technique I often do. It's something I tried that's going to be in an upcoming video. I'm still a tad bit undecided on it overall. But the one thing I will say about this is it means that I can know that I don't have any of this yarn on top of each other. So normally the way like I lay yarn down and move it around, um, you, I will inevitably, inevitably have um, some laying on top of each other. But I believe like here I have all five skeins. So the question is, do I speckle on with powder and just have some sort of like chunky type speckles? Or do I use like drops of the 2% uh, true black dye stock? Or like use like a, like a paintbrush or something and add just like little specks that way. So I look forward to hearing what you think, chat. As I pour my broken, my body's not broken. <laughs> okay, Bernie, I'm gonna do some more. I got curious what everyone thinks. Uh, and then I will move it further down or actually maybe I'll even zoom in the camera. Uh, so that way you guys can have a better view of it. Drops or paintbrush. I'm sort of leaning that way. I don't do that often. Um, one problem that I have is, so currently the yarn is in there. There's like no immersion. But if I'm going to add more to the other side, I could do that like off camera. Let's do a bit. You, you do me. Um, yeah. Uh, all right, I think I'm going to go and we'll see powder. Uh, we'll see what happens. Part of me loves this so much, I don't want to add. Ooh, or maybe I have a different. Ooh, I don't know. Like, I love this like blue base. Paintbrush. So when I'm talking about speckles with the paintbrush, I'm talking about literally painting on versus I'm not gonna, I don't um, splatter with paintbrushes just in case uh, someone thought that that's what I was gonna do. Right here. 
Because see, like if I go for the powder, I can make it a little more subtle. Okay. Uh, I also love it the way it is. I think it's beautiful the way it is. But so this is where like. Oh. Okay, this is what I could do. I love this the way it is. I have five skeins. I don't have to treat all five the same. So I could do um, two. Uh, no, let's do all the one. Um, let's do all the one. Um, okay, I'm gonna stand up and look at it again. And it's really beautiful. I do. <sighs> it's so torn. I want to add black. I love how this is. This effect is something I can try someday to replicate it. Wouldn't it be exactly the same? But at least I could try. Oh, I got it. Just threw away some old bananas today. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think I could get exactly this because I'm you know, I've been dying bits by feel, but I do think I want to add some black to it. There are times when I'm like, nope, you should just stop. But I want to really, really go for our blue jay. So I am going to, and I think I'm gonna do it with the liquid. Yes, so the twisted will break it up a bit, but what I don't know is if, um, I don't think I have it like twisted enough to like, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm debating doing drops. Like I brought out like a whole foam brush, but I think that's too big for what I want. Although, actually, maybe it's not. Okay, so that's really pigmented. That's 2% true black. Um, this is just some water. I'm going to dilute it. And let's test and see how pigmented this is on a paintbrush. That is pretty pigmented. So you can see that just what I already diluted, I'm going to come in and just sort of tap on the yarn, just like that. But I think I will zoom in if I can manage it. Watch the type camera. Sorry, everyone. Pan. Yep. And tilt. Yep. Almost. There we go. And so there will be some amount of spread. I don't have guar gum or anything in here. But we've got acid in here already. And so some amount of this should strike on the faster side. Now I did, these skeins are twisted, so it might look like I'm adding things like all on the same side, but if I were to untwist it, there would be some spread. I have no idea how I'm gonna feel about this, 
and if I will have regrets. But trying to emulate in like a non. So what's fun about this is that these blues could pool a little bit, but I'm trying to have these like little, these largish specks be something that wouldn't necessarily pull, bringing in a little more randomness. And so if I untwist one, yeah, those are actually pretty randomly spaced. Um, sort of flippy it. These might not be balanced, won't be like a regular stripey repeat. There's not a lot of liquid in the yarn, which is why like these may spread, they might not, but we are going to just sort of go for it. And so in some areas where it's a little bit drier, as I go on, then sometimes it gives like a little more sort of like speckly, feathered kind of thing. This is actually really fun. You can tell that like I start really focusing when I go silent. Um, I stop talking as much. And I am really just, this is really fun. I don't usually do something so like random like this. But I'm looking for, I'm just really very randomly going on it, trying to hit various spots. And so on yarn, like these larger sections might take up like a portion of a stitch. Um, and so it'll add, it'll look more speckly on the yarn. And so I will probably pop this in, I don't know if all this, oh, that was a lot. All this will fit in my steamer basket. I love that I started so ordered and twisted and then I was like, Oh, and now I'm like, ooh, let's just go, go for it. I feel like, I feel almost like I'm splatter painting a canvas, which I'm definitely not, but there's something just really, really free about this. Even though I know Blue Jays aren't speckled, but you know. I just, I get really inspired by nature. And some of these might spread and just add a little bit of grayness to it. So I know speckles aren't for everyone. But the nice thing about doing something so random like this, um, it is so freeing. Um, but the other thing that is really, really nice about it is that um, the other thing really nice about it is something. Oh, I can lay the yarn on top of itself and not have like the colors spread really strangely. And so it doesn't need to be perfect. And in some areas, it might not feel 
that black. You can see as I move it that like we're not seeing a ton. It doesn't need to be too heavy, but I'm again having a load of fun here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, and we know to some extent some of it will strike really quickly and some won't and these will all have different feelings. Oh, that time I had the paintbrush. I'm sort of dabbing it on a paper towel before coming in because I actually for the first time let it sit in. So I would say that this is almost like dry brush. Like Well, and right now it is very, like, it's very dry brush. Okay. That is really fun. So there's some areas where it might go for a while with nothing. And ultimately, it's going to be fairly subtle. So I don't know. Some people might say that I ruined it. I think it's kind of fun. And I think that, like, looking at it, especially once I eventually twist it up, you'd be able to be like, oh, yeah, I see the Blue Jay. I see it. Um, one thing I do want to check. Let's give each one one more little check. Oh, that's a big. That's fine. I'm seeing if there's any patch that feels like kind of missed out. I very rarely dye five skeins at a time. This is not my usual, but I'm really enjoying laying everything on top of each other. I'm just going for it. Uh, okay. I think I got to be satisfied. I don't want to go too heavy. I am going to put this in my steamer basket now. Where am I going to put you? Oh dear. Okay. I'm adding more water onto the zebra. I don't know if all this yarn is going to fit in my little steamer basket. It might actually. Just one more. Okay, guys. Let's go. The thing is, like, this yarn, yeah, it's all going to fit. Wow. Like, the, for 500 grams, that must just be so bad. It must be so bouncy that, uh, it just doesn't, it's fairly compact. Okay, that's gonna steam for 30 minutes. We have leftover colors um, that need some love. I might end up bringing out, I don't know, I need to think about what yarn bases I want to grab. I'm gonna sit down for a moment. <laughs> okay, and I, oh dear. Hopefully that was running on the time. You're getting Blue Jay vibes? Oh goodness, the base blue um, was some frozen with black and some uh, alpine blue with some black. Uh, that's why you love indie art, it's neat, cool, go for it. Yeah, I'm feeling like sometimes, I mean, I really thought I was gonna come in and like hand paint stripes on it. And then I'm like, Sometimes I like to go really, really literal based on the photo. And then I decided I wanted to be a little less literal, but go for chunky. And I think that low immersion, I could have achieved chunky black speckles with powder. Uh, there's a pastel, it was like an art inspired one. That video, that's the kind of black speckles I would have gone for. Low immersion, sort of like heavy and just very discreet spots. But with five skeins, I was like, ugh, I'd have to flip a lot. I have to wait a lot between flips. I don't want to 
spend two hours doing this with a crowded pan the way I want to achieve it. And so then I was like, okay, let's do this and just go for it. So Alpine Blue, at the beginning, I did some swatches. Uh, Peacock Blue and Baby Blue Eyes are like, at least with dry powder, it feel very, very close to the Alpine Blue. Um, the pigmentation, I think, of all of them is different. The Alpine Blue is maybe a little bit more muted, but yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Your, your baseball team is the Toronto Blue Jays. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, yeah, the, um, I am absolutely a Red Sox fan, like unequivocally a Red Sox fan. <laughs> but yeah, I was thinking, I was like, ooh, a little bit like baseball -y. Wait, did they? I'm now trying to remember. I've been, I don't remember who. Lucas is the only, Ryder's never been to a Sox game. Lucas has been to two different spring training games um, in Florida, but that was it. Uh, we haven't taken him to like a proper Fenway experience and well now. <laughs> It'll be a little while. Uh, but I think so even you can get a deeper blue with um, a bright blue and then adding in some pink you can get a deeper blue. Uh, Oh, and did I? No, not on these ones. Uh, excuse me. Okay, I have dye mix. And this is why I uh, measured. Oh, hello, Logitech. Let's zoom. zoom. Nope, nope. Camera, zoom out. Okay, so I have all those other colors that I mixed. Um, that I definitely want to use in some capacity. Now, one reason why I measured, one reason why I measured these colors at the beginning is so I knew that, and of course I'm covering it up with the blue jean. Uh, I know that I started with three grams of frozen, three grams of that alpine blue, I probably used half of those, one gram of the uh, sea spray, three grams of sand dune and three grams of platinum, and then, well, there's some amount of black. Uh, so I think that we will grab some yarn and play with these. I'm debating between 200 grams, maybe I'll grab like 200 grams of stroll. Going to Fenway is on your bucket list? Fenway is a lot of, is a lot of fun. Um, I think that they've like, they've done a really good job whenever they've done like expansions. I think I've sat in almost every kind of space there. Pre-kids we went a lot. Uh, you could often get like fairly cheap last minute tickets. Um, but then like uh, actually the Fortunately, the tickets are fading a bit. Okay, 2007 World Series, Green Monster. And that's me and Keith right there. This was in the, the picture was in the paper. <laughs> and somehow someone got us a copy of it in color. Actually, once we saw that picture in a pizza shop, um, in a pizza shop, and we're like, we, we found this. So it was like on a poster somewhere. Um, but yeah, I would say my favorite place to sit would be my favorite place to sit would be Green Monster. Whoa, that was a weird like, lip, but um, Green Monster. So, oh, I haven't sat in the outfield area, like far outfield. I've sat in like the cheaper bleacher seats, but I think there's like another bleach bleacher area I haven't been. 
but we've we've done a lot of different seats over the years. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I digress. Okay, I'm gonna go and get some scroll, uh, and then be right back. And I think my elephants went to sleep. Go upstairs. Okay. I am going to quickly clean some things. So I miss having a two camera set up because then I could do stuff over at the stove. But what I don't miss about it, oh, this is, I did this weird. What I don't miss about having a two camera setup are the cords that I have to like work around. So logistically, as I'm dyeing the yarn, uh, it is much easier for me to is much easier for me to do it with one camera, but I, I don't always love being trapped on the counter or on the stove, so. Okay, there's no acid in this pre-soak, but we'll set the yarn there for a moment. Let's set you there. Checking in on our stove top yarn. Ooh, that's pretty. It is definitely starting to clear. Ish. Uh, metal spoon. I'm covering some frozen areas. Reduce you. Okay, let's see. Uh, and of course I hid the check. Add some extra zip ties. So you want me to add a resist? Yes, please hit like, please hit like. I could. I think the reason why I'm not tempted to do that is that uh, a lot of times when I do that, I like to add the zip ties on dry so I don't like stretch the yarn out in a weird way. I mean, sometimes it's definitely wet, but here's some pre-soak. It's a little cloudy, but I like to reuse water as well. Some vinegar. Precision is the name of my game tonight, am I right? Uh... But actually, like, that's the thing about art is that there's times when you can be really, really calculated and determined. But ultimately, what I decided when I was like, okay, I'm not going to make stocks and measure out the colors. I knew I was going to mix things by feel. And so having an approximate idea, I knew that if I added all of the dye 
to 500 grams of yarn, that it, that would be a reasonable amount of dye to add. So there's that. Yeah, I know. That's I do have resists on the zebra, but although it's more of a marker, but also sort of a just in case resist. Um, I think that I know one person who is participating in the dye along. Uh, I don't know if they're present at the moment, but uh, I know one at least one person is doing resist that I should be able to have for the recap. Okay, and so for this leftover color, of course you can't see what I got here. So I just added some water and let's start with, who are you? Maybe sand dune. I can't honestly don't know if this is sand dune or platinum. Probably sand dune. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. So I might save the platinum for the other side. Let's do our sea spray, which, okay. It looks green when I pour it in. There's always this blue like finish. It's a weird color. It's a very weird color, a very beautiful color. I mean, goodness, this could just be pretty on its own. This is the problem because I'm like, I'm bound to hit something and I'm going to be like, okay, that's gorgeous. We're done. But, which honestly would be okay. So. We got some Alpine blue. So with that good splash of vinegar, there's a chance things are gonna strike pretty quickly. So I've got these three colors right now. There's still white left. And my plan is to use the other colors on the other side. Because like if I move it, there's still like a good amount of blue down there. But I have a feeling that eh, things could be moving along. This is not warm at all right now, but I am okay. going to leave that here. And so we've got a few more colors left, but I want to let it sit for a little bit. water ready for the next batch, but I will sit down. And I have not forgotten that I do have the marled sock at a 1% depth of shade in the Alpine Blue. I have that sitting aside uh, and I will heat set that later at the end. but I'm sure that that has not absorbed yet. away the powder containers.
Oh shoot, Ray wants to dye yarn tomorrow. I'll have to think about what we're gonna do. Coming down to the chat. Ooh. There is my mouse. No. Should probably move. Where was the bird? A little less weird. <laughs> a little less abrupt. Uh, do you have an idea for Leave No Dead Behind? Uh, you get more stressed using leftovers. Uh, a lot of times I'm just, I just sort of go for it. Uh, sometimes like when it's hot I might do something different but today yeah I'm gonna dye the side we'll flip it and we'll dye the other side with the other colors and then sort of see where it ends up. Um, but a lot of times with Leave No Dye Behind, because usually I want the project to be a little bit on the faster side because I want to try to use up the leftovers. I don't want something like incredibly involved that's gonna take a long time. So I might do like 200 grams of yarn instead of like 300. So there's more space in the pan. So that way when I apply the dye, it is more likely to go further. <laughs> yeah, Julia, it was you. <laughs> yeah, no, resist would be beautiful with the blue jay. Also, like I was thinking about self-striping. I had lots and lots of thoughts and ideas. Um, but I do try to pull out a few for these strings. But while I'm sitting here waiting, and I, of course, can't see the timer, uh, while I'm sitting here, uh, if you love the content here and you've been subscribed a while, there are a few ways that you can support the channel. Uh, you can become a Chemnitz patron, uh, which is a fun way to get uh, some extra bonus content. You can get early access to the Dye Pop PS series, plus um, every month I do a, a Patreon-only live stream where I sort of stream while I'm filming an episode of Dye Pot Weekly. That's one of the perks that you can get. Um, like the, there's a newsletter that all patrons get. And so there's lots of different perks. And so I have that actually pinned in the chat for you to check out. I do also have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. And that is where um, most of my hand dyed yarn ends up. And I'm dropping the link to my shop in the chat. Uh, and you can even search, if you search the shop for Chemnitz Dialog, then you can find the yarn that I've dyed in past streams, the stuff that is left. Um, so Stacy said, you're afraid that you'll end up with something you don't like, which is fair. And so I do want to acknowledge the privilege of hundreds of skeins of fair yarn that I have at my disposal. So that way I can go and just completely pour things on skeins and see where it ends up. Now, one of the reasons why I'm comfortable doing this is that I played around with this a fair number of times and I often really love these extremely free random colorways. It doesn't work as well when I'm aiming for something specific or specific inspiration, but I have a feeling we'll still feel our blue jay in this color when we get to the end wherever that end is for it. So uh, I'm excited about that. But it's definitely like, if I have a lot of resources and so therefore I can just throw dye on extra skeins like it's no big deal. And I know that for others, uh, you might be, you know, you might not have a, a large collection of fair yarn that you can use. And you know maybe you die for specific projects and things like that and so then you have to be a little more conservative with using up your yarn so another thing you can do is you can have mini skeins uh, that you can use up a little bit of the leftover dye or even if it's not a dye stock you could store these colors in containers label them and then use them when you want to with an, an intent and plan something for it So that's what I recommend if you're concerned about getting something that you won't like. Sandy, you are up super late. I hope you have a wonderful sleep and evening. 
you, you turn your um, you turn your aluminum die behind yarn into like hats for charity. Um, that's like a fun way to do it, especially like if you're not sure if, if, if you'll love it. The other thing I'll say is that there's nothing to keep, you could have a leave no die behind skein and you could reuse that same yarn over and over and over and just keep layering more and more and more and more color. Eventually it'll get something really, really dark, uh, but that could be a fun way to play as well. I think over Hanukkah, I don't remember what video, there was at one point where I had yarn mops and they were starting to get fairly, there was enough dye in there that like when I was wiping my hands on it, my hands weren't getting clean. So I actually steamed the mops, let it cool, and then used the same mops again to layer more color on. Well, from the same video and project, but that was something I did once. Hi Molly, welcome. I I feel like I'm I am still awake. Oh, maybe because I had caffeine at dinner. That's why I'm still going strong. <laughs> that means I won't sleep tonight. But I don't usually sleep anyway, so it's fine. Uh, if there's anyone young watching, sleep is very important. Please make sure that you get your rest. Um, I, I have I have this insomnia. <laughs> so, all right, I am going to stand up and we will see where we are with this colorway. Ooh, there's like a blue that's peeked through there. Okay, there's still like a lot of blue there, a lot of the sea spray, and there's still some brown. But I know that when I move it, these colors are gonna blend. But at the same time, I know that when I move it, there's going to be some amount that sort of stays. Um, how am I going to do this? Maybe just one at a time. So see some blue is spreading, but trying to like flip quickly. Let's see most of it has absorbed. And now when I, with this flip, the goal here is to expose areas that have less color. Not that I mind if we end up with white, but, okay, so I think that one color was the sand dune. And then this is our platinum. Yeah, I think so that is going to be mixed in with a little bit of blue that I had on there. And I realize I can't see what you see. And I want to see what you see. Yes, LND, leave no dive high, LNDB. Um, I think I use that acronym, but then I never say the acronym out loud. Uh, so let's see how pigmented we are. Not very, not very pigmented. We've got some black. Not really sure how that's gonna go. <laughs> but actually, maybe we'll mix some of that with the frozen. I'm grabbing some water. I have this like basin where I've got all the like spoons and stuff from the stream. Oh, that's a lot of dye. Uh, but I just keep pulling water from that. I put the frozen in a lot of water. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of color in here. We're just going for it. So I know this might look overwhelming, but those other colors are still there. And I still have the black as well. See, I know where this ends up. It's going to be pretty. It just might not be where I thought it would end up. There are a lot of leave no die behinds where I will get to where I was previously and then stop. But today I am absolutely committed. Here's our black to using up 
as much of this as I can. Okay. And I'm gonna let that sit. I did not take a picture of it before I flipped, but that's okay. I'm gonna go put these to soak. And I'm gonna check in on the zebra. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna let this sit for a bit before I move it because I know as soon as I pick it up, things are gonna move around um, a lot. Okay, I'm over at the zebra. And okay, there's a hint of some blue. I just picked up the yarn all together. Uh, need my tongs. You can remember this yarn is not super wash. I'm gonna turn off the heat and I will add a splash of vinegar to it. I did not add any more dye to it. Okay, our stuff in the steamer basket is almost done. That will be a huge surprise. Um, but we still have the marl, which I can bring over. That's really pretty. There's a lot of color in here still, um, which is not a surprise because this marled sock yarn is non superwash. Uh, so it is very reasonable for it to take time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Let's see. <laughs> oh, you guys learned so much. Thanks for your advice and content. Oh, it's my absolute pleasure. I really, really enjoy just sharing my love for playing with color. And each time I do one of these, I learn so much. And I feel like a lot of, I feel like a lot of doing this is helping me grow as a dyer and an artist. Because as I play around with different bases and play with the same colors on these different bases and see how the colors strike fast or slow or do this and that, it all sort of propels everything forward. And I find like, ooh, there are these techniques I really enjoy and then some that I don't as much and some bases I love and some I don't. But each base has like a different that or a different like way to shine and so sometimes you can dye a colorway that's awesome but maybe you picked the wrong base so uh it's it's very interesting to see how things end up being different okay you you're actually said i'm gonna let the yarn sit in there um until i sign off just because oh I think that's the way I'm going to do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. But I, I, know, I, I love dyeing yarn and playing with yarn and it is just so much fun. And I have to say how much I, oh, okay. I was like, it's looking different. I have to say how much I appreciate uh, you you tuning in and joining me for these streams. My kitchen is very warm right now. <laughs> uh, especially with the new uh, light, which actually I'm curious now how much darker on a Makes a really big difference down here. It didn't make as big of a difference on the counter. It made a little bit of a difference. Uh, 
So that's interesting. It's my new, my new light. <laughs> Although I can, uh, oh my gosh, that is really bright. Ooh, that's not so bad. But interesting. I think that the webcam is like compensating for the light. So, uh, <laughs> I definitely have to play around a bit more with the cameras. So anyway, I think I am going to sign off. But thank you all so much for tuning in and joining me for the Canvas Day Long live stream. So again, if you, sorry, if you would like to participate in the dialogue and potentially be featured in the recap, uh, please go and share your pictures with me on Instagram using the Chemnitz Dialogue hashtag. Uh, you're more than welcome to dialogue from previous months. Just if it's an older month, uh, please like say what month and or like what the kind of photo you were dying from, because otherwise I'm sometimes there's something that looks like completely different from the colors and I'm not entirely sure if it was uh, for a past month or not. Um, but of course you don't have to match the picture exactly. Uh, and you can pull greens. I went just for the bird, but you can go for the whole photo as well. Uh, it's up to you and I want to see what you create. Uh, you can also submit pictures by replying to the inspiration photo image on the Public Chemnitz Facebook page. I should have that post linked in the description for this live stream so you can find it really easily. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's easier for me if you share pictures not as a collage, but just as an individual image because it's easier for me to then like insert into the video, but uh, into the recap, which will come out in, the recaps usually come out about, about a month after the stream. So in mid June, Will, when, will be when you get to see the finished dry yarn, plus all of the submissions. Although, there is a chance that the yarn will end up in the shop before the recap comes out. So if there's a skein you particularly like, uh, you may want to keep an eye out for it. Oh, so yeah, Stacy, the finished yarn uh, will be shown uh, mid-June because I try to give people at least a couple weeks uh, to dye their own yarn and submit photos. And so that's why I wait a little bit longer to share the recap from these live streams as I do from others. Not that I have very many other live streams lately. Uh, with everybody home more, I have done fewer like random daytime streams as I used to, but I'm hoping, well, maybe to some extent, maybe there should be some opportunities this spring, but otherwise, come fall, certainly, uh, I would be able to do more. I was like, oh wait, summer is gonna be complicated. <laughs> uh, well, it's just complicated in terms of like, everyone's gonna be home again when school's out. So, I mean, Keith is still working from home and like all that, so, uh, but anyway. Subscribe, please, if you haven't already. Uh, and if you want to make sure you don't miss a live stream, you can turn on notifications so YouTube can give you a heads up when I uh, start streaming or have one scheduled. But uh, otherwise, thank you all so much. I really appreciate it, and I have so much fun. And this whole dialogue series was a viewer request as well. Uh, I forget now exactly, because we'll, I think we're going to be coming up on three years of Cummins Dialogue. Uh, so yeah, I like, you guys have really good suggestions and I always listen, so leave comments and all of that jazz. Your kids in school next week? Oh, see, we don't get out of school until end of June, <laughs> like the 22nd. So, <laughs> but we also start in September, so yeah. Anyway, all right, I am gonna go and do some finishing of these things and um, yeah, and then actually I may wait and do the marled sock. I'm probably gonna leave that overnight and then I'll put that in in the morning because that way I can have space on the stove to go put the sleep note dye behind yarn. I think that's the way I'm gonna do it. Um, but anyway, 
I will chat with all of you soon. Oh, and there'll be a new Dead Pot Weekly episode out tomorrow morning. So if you miss me, then you'll get another dose of Rebecca in the morning. Oh, no, it ends next week. Um, but still, that feels very, very soon. Um, but yeah, in Massachusetts, we're like on the later end anyway. So anyway, thank you all so much, and I will see you soon. Bye!